Hi everyone. So we are going to continue with chapter 9 that's coordination compound. So in this video we are going to talk about term denticity. So what exactly is meant by the term denticity? We understood previously that coordination compounds are made up of central metal atom along with ligands. And these ligands are basically the donor atoms, okay? Donor so why are they donor because we also learned that they have lone pair of electrons so since they have lone pair of electrons they are able to donate this to metal atom in its vacant d orbital because the metal atom usually belongs to transition series okay here the term denticity signifies that this particular ligand what is coordinating with the metal atom how many atoms are donors in that particular ligand there could be one donor atom there could be two donors atom or there could be the multiple donor atoms so depending upon the number of donor atoms or the ligating atoms present in the ligand we have to specify the term denticity so ligands have been categorized as unidentate ligand didentate ligand and the third one we'll be discussing about polydentate ligands so what exactly is meant by the term uni uni means when only one donor atom is present when only one donor atom is present in such ligands so here i have clearly highlighted one donor atom and the example of such ligand is water ammonia but here the terms are different that i'll mention a little later co group and cn minus so we don't call water in case of coordination chemistry we use the term aqua okay we don't call nh3 i'll write down again here okay it is called as aqua aqua okay now we don't call this as ammonia we call it as amine a mine okay co group is called as carbonyl and cn minus is known as it's a cyanide group but here we call it as cyanido so in all such ligand there is only one donor atom for example in aqua it's oxygen in a mine it's nitrogen in carbonyl again oxygen in cyanido again nitrogen and why so remember one important thing oxygen atom acts as a donor because it has two lone pairs nitrogen act as a donor because it has one lone pair this we have already learned in the previous classes now what exactly is meant by didentate didentate means two atoms present in a ligand act as a donor atoms so here to highlight two donor atoms present in the ligand which bond with the metal atom with the help of coordination bond and one such example i would like to discuss over here is ethylene diamine now in ethylene diamine there are two nitrogen atoms let me just mark an asterisk for you here is one nitrogen atom and here is the other nitrogen atom again it has two donor atoms so it is didentate another one is oxalate ion what's oxalate ion c o o h again bonded with c o o h group this group is known as oxalic acid what is it called as oxalic acid if it donates two protons minus two protons the anion which is obtained is known as oxalate ion did i make it clear okay now here again we have two donor atoms let me take blue pen for you so this oxygen atom and this one acts as donor atoms again therefore it is categorized as didentate let me show you the structures over here yeah so this is for oxalate which i have already mentioned and this is about edta which we will be talking little later as polydentate ligand edta means ethylene diamine tetraacetate so ethylene group is there diamine two nitrogen atoms tetra means four 
acetate groups. Therefore, it is called as abbreviated indeed as EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetate. Okay, it is categorized as polydentate ligand because it has more than two donor atoms. Now, how many donor atoms are present over here? Let us discuss it. Let me mark it here for you with red. This oxygen atom, then this one, two, this is third, this is fourth, this is fifth nitrogen atom, and this is the sixth nitrogen atom. So all the asterisk marked atoms are acting as donor atoms. Therefore, you can easily understand here there are six donor atoms, two nitrogen atoms and four oxygen atoms. Okay, therefore, its densi density is hexa. We use the term hexa. Hence, we call it as hexa dentate okay the term hexa signifies that there are six coordinating atoms and therefore it is categorized as polydentate so to highlight they have several donor atoms an example i have already discussed ethylene diamine tetraacetate ion the structure was also mentioned there here also you can understand the structure of edta Okay, next we move on to chelate. Now, what are chelate compounds? All such complexes which form a close ring around the metal atom. For example, let me sketch here for you. Let me use the space. If this is a metal atom, okay, and let us say it has four ligands and this is how if we represent it it's known as chelate now what is en you might be wondering en is what i mentioned before that's ethylene diamine so if i write the structure of ethylene diamine it's like this so here we have two ethylene groups coordinated with two nh2 groups that is amine so what is the density it's a didentate because two nitrogen atoms were coordinating but when they coordinate they form a ring around the metal atom this is one ring and this is another ring so such type of ligands with definitely they should have more than one donor atoms so didentate ligands and polydentate ligands usually form a ring around the metal atom to coordinate therefore they are known as chelate ligands likewise you can also understand oxalate right if i want to sketch the structure of oxalate i'm going to do it like this again if suppose it has four ligands so here i'm going to show it as ox ox signifies oxalate so remember didentate polydentate form a ring around the metal atom therefore they are also called as chelating ligands and such type of complexes are known as chelates okay so we can easily understand here very clearly okay let us go ahead of it see here i have mentioned very clearly the metal atom and ethylene diamine acting as a chelate ligand now next also i'll just quickly tell you ambidentate ligand what are ambidentate ligands sometimes one within a lig ligand there are two different atoms present okay and what happens uh, sometimes one atom may coordinate to one atom that is metal atom central metal atom and some other time the other atom of the ligand may coordinate okay it's little difficult to understand like that i'll just draw a rough sketch for you okay so let me just first highlight it for you ligands which can ligand ligate that means acting as a ligand and coordinating to central metal atom through different atoms present in it now for example if i take an example of nitro group okay NO2. Now in NO2 there are two coordinating atoms. One is nitrogen atom and the other one is 
oxygen atom because nitrogen atom has one lone pair and oxygen atom has two lone pairs now what exactly ha ha happens here just be careful to make a note of it if this is a metal atom okay uh, let me sketch it like this for you yeah here we go if this is the condition that means in such a situation this nitrogen atom which i have drawn over here i'll put an asterisk acts as a donor and it has developed a bond that's a coordinate bond with the central metal atom which belongs to transition atom so what is the donor atom here nitrogen but in other situation what happens i can have the other possibility as well i'll use the space for you let us say this is the metal atom and it doesn't coordinate with nitrogen i'm talking about nitro group now the coordinating atom is oxygen and here i draw nitrogen and then double bond o now since oxygen acts as a coordinating atom it has formed a coordinate bond with the metal atom therefore such type of ligands in which in one situation it was one atom coordinating in another situation it was another atom but of the same ligand are called as ambidentate ligand now visualize it very clearly what's the difference between ambidentate ligands and didentate remember very very important point didentate means two coordinating atoms coordinating at the same time but ambidentate ligand has two coordinating atoms but coordinating at two different time right so it is not going to uh, you know be coordinating in the form of chelate so ambidentate ligands are different from chelate ligands because in chelate ligands the two coordinating atoms were coordinating at the same time but in ambidentate the two atoms are present but they are acting as donor at different times right so i made it very clear to you okay now quickly we'll also look into the nature of the ligands the nature of the ligand can be anionic depending upon the charges cationic positive neutral means no charge so here we have a list of ligands with us which you have to learn to make the things clear quickly i'll breeze through this anionic means negative charge cationic positive neutral means no charge so the list of negative charges are over here the first one is called as acetato cyanido bromido chlorido and fluorido this is how we have to use because we have to make sure that all the ligands with negative charge end with o okay next here i have mentioned again as all with negative charge you can see all are ending with o o o right so make sure all negative end all negative ligands end with alphabet o so you have to memorize all these names positive ligands are only two that is nitrosonium and hydrazinium neutral again you have list aqua i mentioned amines carbonyl all these i have mentioned methyl amine nitrosyl means no and one the last one is pyridine so with this i come to an end of this video in next video we'll be learning about nomenclature and werner's theory so keep watching and stay blessed Thank you all.